Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Unilever South Africa is sourcing 40% of its sunflower oil from farms in Limpopo that use only yearly rains to grow their crops. Skulk Berger reports. Mokopong sunflower farmers, who are part of Unilever South Africa's Sustainable Sunflower Farming Initiative, say that the clay-rich soils in the area must be prepared and moisture conserved to enable sunflower farming without irrigation. This, however, makes the proper timing for planting critical. Unilever South Africa has also provided two new sunflower cultivars to farmers who are part of the initiative, and these cultivars should be able to generate more yield for each hectare, as well as have higher oil content in the sunflower seeds. Unilever South Africa uses the oil in the sunflower seeds to produce margarine for sale on the local market, and aims to source all its sunflower oil from sustainable agricultural sources. Unilever South Africa Chairman Marijn van Tichelen discusses sustainable agricultural raw material sourcing by the company. The project here uh, for sunflower oil in Mokopo uh, started about two years ago and um, uh, we started to partner with uh, about 30 farmers uh, right here in Limpopo um, to, uh, to see if we can make uh, sunflower um, crops and, and the oil that we derive from it um, compliant to the universe code of uh, sustainable agricultural practices. And uh, I'm really pleased to say that we've been very successful over the two years, been a lot of hard work, um, but uh, we are nearing 100% sustainability uh, for the sunflower oil that Unilever uses in its operation right here in South Africa. Uh, and I'm extremely pleased uh, to, uh, to be able to say that uh, the practices that they are using uh, are also sustainable. We think that this, uh, this project, two years into it, has a lot of potential to be expanded. Uh, there's still uh, more hectare, hectare uh, uh, hectares to, uh, to be farmed. Um, we also want to look at um, other crops. So we're currently looking at uh, some, some other potential crops, um, whether here in Lampopo or somewhere else. Um, there's also a possibility uh, that um, we might uh, start to export from here, um, which would be very interesting. Now, it's not that easy to uh, transport oils uh, across an ocean uh, because very quickly the commercial side of things will start to catch up. Um, but we, uh, we firmly believe that uh, this is just the start of something uh, great to come. Other news making headlines this week, Mercedes-Benz South Africa starts work on its 300 million rand plus BRT contract and African countries must learn infrastructure lessons from each other. Mercedes-Benz South Africa's Sandown Motor Holdings has won the tender to provide the 134 buses necessary for the rollout of the 18-kilometer Phase 1B of Johannesburg's Rea Via bus rapid transit system, valued at more than 300 million rand. We have already ordered uh, chassis uh, in Brazil, so this, uh, the chassis will arrive at CKD, uh, CKD in uh, South Africa. Um, so this is already uh, in, in progress. Uh, the chassis will be assembled in our plant in East London. Uh, we deliver them uh, to Marco Polo and uh, they will body uh, um, uh, the, the, the product so that we can start uh, with delivery round about end uh, of June. And then from month to month, we de will deliver all uh, the units according uh, to that what uh, yeah, the city expects from us. Consultancy firm City Insight partner Sue Bannister says that although Africa has learned many lessons from the UK and the US regarding infrastructure development, it's important for countries on the continent to learn from each other because they share many of the same challenges. With all the people coming into cities, that our current infrastructure really can't cope with that influx. So as more and more people come into cities, we've got to increase our, the capacity of our infrastructure to be able to deal with all of those new inhabitants in the city. As difficult as it is building new projects, it's easier to build than to make the current ones just work better. So new projects are kind of sexy and the mayor can go and cut the ribbons, but making current projects work better and more efficient is something we've got to get more skilled at because that's if we're going to get more use out of our infrastructure and not have to pay the huge budget for 
for new infrastructure, we've got to learn to do that. And that's often small changes um, that can make big differences. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.